Lise Parrish believes she has a fatal illness, but she is trying to develop her own cure. The disease, growing old. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission to help people live a full and healthy life without the diseases of aging and complex disorders. And Liz isn't the only person on a mission. A growing number of respected scientists think we definitely can and should fight aging. My view is that anyone who tells you that aging is beautiful and something to embrace is either being dishonest with you or dishonest with themselves. I see no beauty in it. If you love somebody and you see how they age and if you um, feel that you might lose them, you want them to be eternally healthy and, and happy. But it's not only scientists excited by this idea. There is a growing number of true believers who think that we could live for hundreds of years. It's like it's fun to be alive. It's fun, why give it up? I'm not giving it up. This is about more than staying fit and healthy into old age with a good diet and exercise. This is the pursuit of a much longer, healthier lifespan using science and genetics to achieve it. And who hasn't dreamt of staying young? But how far would you be prepared to go to achieve that dream? Liz Parrish believes she has found a way to defy aging. But she's not a scientist. She's a businesswoman who in 2013 turned to the internet after her son was diagnosed with diabetes type 1. What I did is I started to go online to search for uh, deeper treatments for disease and I ran into genetics. And um, it, to me, this looks to be the cure for not only childhood disease, but all of the things that ail us. She thinks she's found a method that can reverse aging. So the idea is to not make people older longer. It's actually to help them be as youthful as possible for a long period of time. In order to do that, two years ago, Liz performed an experiment on herself, never before tried in humans. She took a therapy only tested previously on mice, designed to lengthen the telomeres of her chromosomes, one of the building blocks of our DNA. We can say that some of the cells in my body, uh, by the length of the telomeres, are up to 20 years younger. And how do you feel? <laughs> well, I feel great. I mean, I wish my whole organism was, was uh, marked in my 20s, but we still have a ways to go. We haven't solved the problem yet. I don't think aging is a disease. It's the cause of diseases, so it's even more important than, than being a disease. It's actually the origin of the disease. Uh, and therefore, that's why I'm interested in understanding aging. To try to find out more about Lise's project, I've come here to Madrid to meet Maria Blasco, director of the Spanish National Cancer Research Center. Even though they don't know each other, Liz Parrish's self-experiment was inspired by the results of Maria's work. So, you know, we are made of cells. And, uh, you can see I'm drawing here a cell. Each cell has a nucleus, and inside the nucleus there are the, these uh, things called chromosomes. So the chromosomes have all the genetic information of what we are. And at the end of the chromosomes, at each one of the ends, are the telomeres. And one interesting thing of these telomeres is that they shorten as we age. And when the telomeres get uh, critically short, so this results in the, de the death of the, of the cell. This is one of the basic mechanisms of aging. The question is, if we could lengthen telomeres, can we slow the aging process? In 2008, Maria Blasco tried to find out. She set out to lengthen telomeres in mice using a specially developed enzyme called telomerase. The results were eye-catching. The mice lived on average 40% longer than their usual lifespan. 
of course, was an amazing feeling uh, because we realized, or I realized, that we actually had, uh, you know, manipulated one of the basic mechanisms of why uh, we age, and this could lead to, you know, important applications in the future. But there was a catch. The therapy would almost certainly have increased cancer rates in the mice had the animals not been genetically modified to be cancer resistant, something that cannot be done in humans. So Maria and her team refined the process, and in 2012, they carried out a second experiment. So these mice actually live 20% longer, and uh, cancer was also delayed. So this showed that it was possible to delay aging and aging-associated pathologies, including cancer, with telomerase. Exciting though the results were, a one-off experiment in mice doesn't mean it will work in humans. But that has not deterred Liz Parrish, who set up her own biotech company, BioViva, to replicate the experiment on herself. Well, if we're sitting on the cure for biological aging and complex disease, it would actually be a crime against humanity to not move forward and find out. Somebody needed to step forward to do this, to show the world that it's safe and that, come on, we should probably get involved in this technology and start eradicating the diseases that are plaguing us now. Lee says blood tests show some of her telomeres have lengthened, but she's yet to have the results independently verified. In fact, her experiment is a long way from a proper clinical trial, and taking an untested gene therapy is potentially dangerous. It's not going to be very, very useful and it is risky because if you want to try some new therapy, uh, this has to be done through the regulatory agencies so you can check whether it's toxic, whether it has any bad effects and you can also see whether it's useful or not, it's really been effective. If I could pay to expand my years of youth, um, I don't know, I'm still very young so I guess it, this is more for like older people to answer. Younger forever would be pretty nice. Yeah, stay uh, young for like an immortal, like like a vampire, of course, yeah, who wouldn't want to do that? Where is it? I'll be the first to sign up. You ready? Yeah. Okay, my name is James Stroh, I'm the director of the Coalition for Radical Life Extension and co-founder for People Unlimited. I'm Bernadine and I'm co-founder of People Unlimited. So we were the creators of RadFest, uh, which is the event we're at right now. RadFest, revolution against aging and death, the biggest gathering of longevity enthusiasts on the planet. Being physically immortal is in my blood. It's in my blood from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. This yearly festival in California offers a mind-boggling array of clean anti-aging treatments. My team developed the Therify device. Essentially, you could call it like a human battery charger. Every cell of the body needs a certain frequency of voltage for it to be healthy. So in a nutshell, if you were to put fruit here and come back in two years' time, that fruit would still be very, very healthy. We're doing thermal imaging, analyzing the skin, and how the skin is correlated to every muscle, organ, and gland by addressing inflammation, lymphatic congestion, the precursors to disease is gonna help you live longer. We do medical engineering for the optimization of vitality and for longevity. That way you can become the best version of you. We like to say you perfected. At RadFest it's kind of a special opportunity because it's people who already are very interested in stopping biological aging. Statistically, in developed countries, people are already living nearly twice as long as a century ago. But these people don't want to stop there. And there is money in it. Investors are starting to come to these type of conferences because they're getting excited about this technology. I believe that uh, business will start to happen at these type of conferences uh, soon. But there's a lot of difference between starting a conversation with an investor and finishing it. This event, this festival, this revolution! Aging is a disease, but most of the world has not seen that, but it actually is. And if we'll cure aging, there will be a domino effect that will cure most many other diseases, age-related diseases down the line. It's going to happen. Despite the optimism at RAD, 
the promise of eternal youth is still a fantasy. But along the West Coast, the idea of extending life is being taken very seriously. Scientists are looking at many possible ways to slow down aging, not just telomeres. If you love somebody and you see how they age, and if you f um, feel that you might lose them, you want them to be eternally healthy and, and happy. Health and fitness fanatic Steve Horvath is a professor in human genetics and biostatistics. He thinks we're still in the foothills of understanding what causes aging. I believe there's a passive clock. It actually measures the state of your cells. It doesn't cause things to deteriorate. It just keeps track of a mechanism that actually does cause that. So there is a mechanism we just don't understand yet. I call it one of the root causes of aging. If we're ever going to reverse aging, he argues, we first need to understand this mechanism called the epigenetic clock. It all starts with the DNA molecule. As you know, most cells of the human body contain a DNA molecule that um, encodes four different letters, A, C, T, and G. Now, in this model, the yellow stones correspond to the letter C. As you carefully look at the molecule, you will see there are some dots that are black. These are modifications of the letter C, epigenetic modifications of the letter C. By counting the number of black dots at certain locations, we will be able to estimate the passage of time that occurred in a cell. It is these epigenetic modifications which Steve believes are a strong candidate to be the root cause of aging. The good news about these age-related epigenetic changes is that they are reversible. You know? in, in, so in principle, one can um, um, come up with a tr treatment, maybe a drug, um, that could reverse these epigenetic changes so that you restore the cells and therefore the tissues and organs to a more youthful state. If epigenetic changes are important, does Steve believe telomeres also play a role? We have to acknowledge that um, the telomere interpretation of aging has been disappointing. Many people in the anti-aging field um, are enamored with the idea that if we overexpress um, telomerase, for example, which would lengthen our telomeres, you know, that that would be a viable anti-aging um, therapy, you know, but the depressing news is that if you overexpress telomerase and end up with longer telomeres, you actually increase your risk for cancer, you know. So there's this paradoxical finding, if your telomeres are too long, you actually have a higher risk of developing cancer. But are you biased? Because your area of expertise is, is epigenetics and therefore you think that's the answer. No, I wouldn't interpret it that way, you know, because um, my purpose in life is to defeat aging. I would do whatever it takes to get there. Just to be clear, I think they are an important contributor to aging. Just don't think of it as um, the fountain of youth, you know. Even though there is not yet a consensus on the causes of aging, up the coast in San Francisco, Billions of dollars are being poured into biotechnology startups in search of an answer. So far, anti-aging has been roughly an $8 billion industry of stuff that doesn't work. But if you could actually produce things that prevent multiple age-related diseases, then you, know, you could take the $10 billion that people are spending on one particular disease, like Alzheimer's, uh, and multiply that by as large a number as you want. Roller skating enthusiast Joe Betts Lacroix is a scientist and entrepreneur who has raised millions of dollars from venture capitalists like PayPal founder Peter Thiel. He thinks the answer to longer lives lies in preventing age-related diseases. He is also the founder of Health Extension, 
a community that brings together scientists and entrepreneurs to create startups in the aging industry. How much money have you raised for your companies? For us, I think I can say it's uh, you know, in the uh, in the late 30 millions. And Christine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh yeah, in the mid, I guess, well, yeah, around 14 million. But I can't say for our fund in particular, but our companies in total have raised in the order of a couple hundred million between them. Wow, where, where do you find these investors? There's a trend that I'm really excited about in Silicon Valley where a lot of people with tech money are getting interested in, in biology and not just, not just biology, but also aging. Well, especially where biology sort of intersects with technology and you're using robotics or you're using machine learning. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there seems to be a growing interest in this industry. Why, why is that? One well, of the interesting things has really been, you know, when I first came out here, the reason I wanted to work in this space was I had you know, been in a couple labs and just been so surprised that investors weren't coming to us every day, knocking on the door and being like, hey, what do you have? You know, we just kind of sit there with this great science and then nobody would show up. And it was like, what's, what's wrong here, you know? Um, but I think one of the fascinating things has been that's really flipped around the past couple of years. It's been like, you know, it, folks are now very actively going out and saying, what's happening in aging? I want to invest in an aging company. Let's invest in that. Yeah, I think the science is pretty exciting now. I think there's things that we discovered in the past 10 years that are, that are new. Um, we have drugs and we have genetic mutations that can make mice live a lot longer. Uh, and if those translated directly to humans, uh, then we could add basically 10 to 20 years of healthy human life. Suddenly, in the last few years, people have found some things that actually extend lifespan in mammals. Uh, and, and so now it, 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 you can just tell that it's right on the precipice of it's time to bring it into, into people. Uh, but that's, that's a very challenging process. So what is it about animal studies, mammals in particular, that has got investors and scientists excited? One thing that's interesting is that small horses tend to live longer than large horses. Well, it turns out that the hormones that we discovered affect lifespan, they also affect size. And if you turn these hormones down the whole life, <clears throat> the animal will be small and live long. If you just turn them down in the adult, they won't be small, but they'll still live long. As far as we know, for every species that's been tested, turning down this hormone system extends lifespan. Cynthia is not just any old horse lover. She is head of Google's Calico, one of the best funded biotech companies in the United States. Calico is also very secretive. We've been granted a rare interview, but weren't allowed to ask detailed questions about what they are working on. Calico's idea is to have a better understanding of aging uh, in all its forms and maybe a better understanding of how you can intervene in animals and increase lifespan in a healthy way and also at the same time in parallel try to devise interventions for people you know so Calico is kind of a little microcosm of the bigger field of aging. Cynthia made her name with a bit of pioneering research on a type of worm known as C. elegans in the early 90s by partially disabling a single gene called DAF2, Cynthia's team managed to double the lifespan of these animals. So in just one fell swoop, the whole animal lives twice as long and ages much more slowly than normal. So that was really stunning because it's not supposed to happen. Because then people go, oh my god, if you can do it for these little worms, maybe you could do it for other animals. And sure enough, you can. Other people later, they showed you could do it for fruit flies, you could do it for mice. Again, maybe, maybe people, we don't know. Whether this is something Calico is looking at, we can only guess. They do say they want to have a better understanding of how and why we age in order to intervene and increase people's healthy lifespan. So most diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, happen to the elderly, mostly. So they're age-related. And it turns out, when you slow down aging in these animals, you also postpone these diseases, and when they, they do occur, they're milder. So the same molecular machinery that could keep us young 
could also keep us free of age-related diseases for a longer time. So in other words, if you could hit aging, target aging, maybe you'd have a drug that just one pill that could have effects on many diseases all at once. Google clearly believes this is science worth investing in. But how close does Cynthia really think we are from delaying aging in humans? If people are like animals, in the sense that if their aging machinery is still susceptible to um, intervention the way the animals are, it might be really close. It might be really, really close. But if we're different somehow, or if we've already kind of maxed out, then it might be a long time. I think we'll be able to do it. I really do. Aging is a very good thing for me. I currently have good health, I take care of myself, and uh, life is beautiful as you age. Life experiences. I think I don't want to live forever because you wouldn't be so appreciative of life and of the little things, and you wouldn't have so much urgency to go and do the things that you want to. I don't see myself super old just because I feel like they have more problems, more health problems, and I don't want to become a burden to anybody if I become ill or I need somebody to take care of me. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah, no, I think it would be much better if we didn't age. Along with Calico, the other Silicon Valley venture with deep pockets is Unity Biotechnology. It was founded by multimillionaire Nathaniel David, who is motivated by more than just the chance to make money. I watched my stepfather die of Alzheimer's. There was nothing dignified or beautiful about that. And, um, you know, he forgot who he was. He forgot who we were. And my view is that anyone who tells you that aging is beautiful and something to embrace is either being dishonest with you or dishonest with themselves. I see no beauty in it. His work focuses on a specific type of cell. We at Unity, while we believe there are multiple mechanisms of aging, we choose to focus on a particular mechanism that we think is uniquely amenable to making drugs to impact it. And this mechanism is called cellular senescence, and it works like this. At conception, you're a single cell. That's you. And over the arc of your life, you, this cell, will divide as many as 50 times. And as you, this cell, approach 50 cell divisions, you'll encounter some form of cellular stress, and you will pull an emergency brake and stop dividing forever. These non-dividing cells are called senescent cells. They play an important role in preventing cancer, but they also drive features of aging. So Unity were able to eliminate these cells in lab mice to see what would happen. And when we did this, something astonishing happened. These mice had a profoundly extended period of something called health span. This is the period of time that these animals live free of chronic diseases of aging. They had increased heart function. They had increased bone deposition. They had uh, reduced arthritis. They had reduced cataract formation. They even behaved like younger animals into advanced age. Oh, and as a side effect, yes, they did live longer, but we think that's the boring part. The really cool part is the fact that a bunch of these things that you think of as inescapable aspects of aging, they didn't occur. In order to develop this treatment, they first had to find molecules that could selectively eliminate senescent cells in specific age-related diseases. But Unity says in the next 12 to 18 months, they are planning to run their first clinical trial on patients with osteoarthritis. Our animal modeling suggests that the removal of senescent cells uh, will relieve pain and also allow the cartilage, which no longer heals in patients with osteoarthritis, to actually heal again. So how awesome would it be if you could go to an old person uh, who's on a cane and inject them 
and three days later it doesn't hurt. And then three months later, they've actually generated new cartilage. With the United States spending an estimated $2.3 trillion per year on age-related diseases, it is easy to see the economic potential if it were possible to slow down aging. Think about this. Most biotech products treat a disease you've never heard of that someone you do not know suffers from. Everyone you know suffers from aging. Everyone. Unity's approach is just one among the many possible causes of aging being investigated. Nathaniel David likens the various theories about aging to a tree. No one knows yet whether their particular specialities are the roots, trunk, branch, or leaves of that tree. The question is, which of the competing theories underpins everything else? When I think about the tree, I think that cellular senescence, um, if we're very lucky, is probably a nice branch. I don't think it's trunk, and I certainly don't think it's roots. If I were to um, speculate at what could uh, dwell in the trunk or the roots, could be epigenetic clock. I think that's a, that's a potentially powerful one. And I think in the next five to 10 years, we're gonna learn whether or not you can do some major alteration of the epigenome and make an animal that ages one half the speed. How awesome would that be? Liz, meanwhile, is betting on telomeres. She says she has raised millions in investment and plans to start offering clinical trials next year. We'll start with a low-hanging fruit of a gene that's already been in humans and in all the animal models that are acceptable to show data. And then we'll move to the stronger gene therapies like the telomerase inducer to lengthen your telomeres. Although it is a trial, patients will need to pay if they want to take part. Well, initially, they'll be very expensive therapies. They'll be in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, some of the therapies will be over a million, but we're coming up with strategic ideas how to treat localized areas of the body and then moving towards full body treatments. Liz will have to conduct her trials outside the US. To date in the States, there have been no human clinical trials of drugs to slow down aging. That's because the regulatory body, the FDA, only allows testing of drugs that will combat diseases, and aging is not classified as a disease. But is that about to change? There's a lot of excitement around aging right now. I mean, we've, we've been studying this process for 25, 30 years in, in the laboratory, and we've learned a great deal about the aging process and why aging causes diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, various cancers, and so on. Gordon Lithgow at the Buck Institute for Research of Aging in California has been working in the field for more than 25 years. So we're at a point right now where we're seriously talking for the first time and I, I've been doing this aging research for a long time now, we're talking for the first time about clinical trials with drugs that could slow down the aging process. That's in incredibly exciting and something that I didn't really expect to see in my lifetime. The drug in question is metformin, which has been used for more than 20 years to treat diabetes. Researchers have noticed that patients taking metformin tend to outlive diabetics taking other drugs. But strikingly, they also appear to be less likely to suffer from age-related diseases such as cancer, Alzheimer's and dementia. The plan is to recruit 3,000 patients over 80 years old for a trial to test whether the drug does slow the aging process and delay age-related diseases. However, it will be a long road. Any results will take at least five years, and even if successful, no one is expecting a miracle cure. I don't imagine that we're going to have one magic bullet that, that, that slows down aging dramatically in humans. 
Um, I think that we, we actually don't really know how complex aging is in humans. We, we have a lot more work to do before we can really say it's this one process or this other process. Metformin has been safely prescribed to patients for years, but Lisa's telomere experiment has not undergone the usual clinical trials. I wanted to know how she could justify the risk of offering it to the public. When we bring patients in, uh, we do have a liability. We have a liability to them and the world to ensure that what we're doing is safe. We, we don't want to give a bad reputation to gene therapy, so it's, it's a very serious time. As much as we're excited, you know, we're, we are definitely thinking about all ends on the other side. You, as the CEO of BioViva, how aware are you of that risk and that responsibility? When anything goes wrong, it will be my responsibility uh, in, in many ways, being the CEO of the company, and I will have that conversation. We've looked at the research, we've looked at the animal data, we've looked at the human cell data, and I've taken the therapies myself. So I mean, that's, that's, that's more than, than the average uh, biotech might do to ensure that a drug was safe before they gave it to patients. There are many more competing theories about what causes aging. So after all this, what have we learned? After speaking with scientists and self-experimenters, I can say two things. One is that there is a real conviction we can delay the aging process. And the other one is that there is serious money being invested in that idea. My prediction is that people might, their median lifespan will probably be like if you were an American white male, rather than being 79, might be 103. And many people you know, rather than dying at age 83, demented, catheterized in their bed, muttering to themselves, they would die at 106 on the tennis court while winning. Or killed by a jealous lover at 113. Certainly, I think it's something that is going to happen, that we are going to be not only living longer, which we are already living longer, uh, but live longer without diseases, and this is the goal. As interesting as this science sounds, nobody really knows when or if this research will produce results in humans. But in the meantime, Gordon Lithgow has some sound advice. The most amazing anti-aging medicine that we know about right now is, is exercise. Exercise is really incredible. It'll be a long time before we come up with a, a drug or some other intervention as good as exercise. Nutrition is also important. We know that, at least in the laboratory, if you reduce the number of calories, lifespan is extended, and also disease pathology is, is suppressed. So, so those choices of exercise and diet are really important now, today. This is something we can do today. Liz says she doesn't have time to exercise, but she's happy to put her trust in her proposed experiment. She is a very expensive human guinea pig. <laughs> well, I can definitely say I wear my jewelry on the inside. <laughs> I'm an expensive test subject. This is what you're gonna do until you die. <laughs> well, I actually intend on solving this problem, but uh, right now, let's just say this is my life mission, and, and if I died doing this, I would be a happy person.